Hi creators, today I'm going to make something very simple. This effect is built into Adobe After Effects. It is a page curl and it's not a drag and drop in DaVinci Resolve, but I'm going to show you quickly how to put this together. This is the quick and dirty version. I'm also going to post another video on my channel that is going to be a much fuller effect that's going to be more of a page turn effect in 3D space. And so take a look for that as well. But for now, here's the quick version. Here we go. Okay, so I have a couple of clips into my timeline here. And it's basically just some eel shots from an aquarium shot with an iPhone. Nothing very fancy. I just needed some video footage here to show you guys how to do this. So, uh, so that's what I got. So I'm going to just lay on the first video, slightly overlapping the second video, and we're going to create this page curl. And so whatever is underneath is going to be showing up. So we want this to be overlaid over top of the second video. And so we're going to go into the Fusion tab. Um, I'm in the editing tab to start. Go ahead and go into the Fusion tab. Okay, so we have that media in place there. And you can see basically whatever is in white here is on the screens. There's a split screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and close this keyframe for now. Give myself a little bit more space. Make sure that the lineup all tools to grid is selected. I like to keep things a little bit neater. And so I'm going to go ahead and break this connection. I'll put the original media up in the left side by grabbing that and dropping it into the left side there. And so we're going to need a few different nodes here. I know how much you guys love to work with nodes, but that's the way to do this in DaVinci Resolve. So we're going to go ahead and put an image plane in here. And so we're going to project this original video footage on this image plane. It's going to be a 3D image plane. I'll go ahead and connect that just to show you what I'm doing here. So it that image plane is going to take the shape of the original video footage. It's basically 1080p. And so there it is sitting in 3D space. And the thing that we're going to need to place on here, I'm going to go ahead and right click down here in the flow area where the nodes are placed and click Add Tool, go to 3D, and I want to go to this Bender 3D. Go ahead and add that node in there. We'll go ahead and make that connection between the image plane and this Bender 3D. Okay, let's go ahead and add a Render 3D in here as well. And so we can just drag and drop that uh, from this tool right up here in this toolbar. Go ahead and connect my media out to my Render 3D. And we need one more tool. And that one is going to be the Transform 3D. We'll go ahead and add that tool. Okay, so we'll make that connection between the Bender, the Transform, the Transform, and the Render 3D. So now I just have basically the original two, Media In, Media Out, and I've added these four nodes, Image Plane 3D, Bender 3D, Transform 3D, and Render 3D. And I'm not going to put any cameras or lights in here. I'm going to keep this really simple, as I said originally in this video. So let's go ahead and take a look at this now. So I'll go ahead and put the Render 3D in this left window and to take a look and see what we are rendering. And we need to make some adjustments here. We'll start with putting, uh, we'll change this Transform 3D just a bit. We are going to scale this up a bit so it fills my full frame. I believe we got to go to three on this one. Based on default. So now the original footage is filling the full frame. And let's go and look at that media out now. It fills the full frame. That's what we want to see there. And make this a little bit bigger. So you can see that's a 1920 by 1080. So next I want to do some work on this Bender 3D. I'll go ahead and pull this up into the window. I'm going to press the Alt key and the middle mouse button and I can just move around in 3D space here. I can zoom in holding down the control button and using the mouse wheel. I can hold down the, the middle mouse button and just kind of move this around to get it into the space that I want. And so the Bender has some different options. You can see the Bend type 
it's bend, taper, twist, and shear. And I'm going to just turn this all the way up for you so you can take a look at that. That's making it kind of a tube. It, it defaults to the y-axis. And so let's go ahead and change that to the x-axis. You can see that does some crazy stuff to our footage there. But if we look at the taper, it's kind of going to start at one side, it's full, and then the far side, it's nothing. Twist is going to just kind of make it a twist. And then shear, kind of just twist it around the opposite direction. You can change the angle here. Uh, you can change the center point here as well. And so I want to use the actual bend. We don't want that much of a bend. But I want to go ahead and change the center position. Let's move that down just a bit. Okay, so let's, over time, what I want to do is basically just animate this bending. So I, want, I don't want to start the bending until kind of the end of this video. So it's going to go through 240. And so right about 150, I'm going to start this bend. And we'll go ahead and type in zero there. And we'll type in an angle of one to start. And then I'm going to go to about 225. Okay, so at this point, 225, I want to change the center location. So right now it's starting on the left side. And so if I change that angle, you can see it's kind of pinned down to the left side here. I don't want that. I want to pin it to the right side. So now when I change it, you can see it's pinning to the right side. So at 225, I'm going to go ahead and make a drastic difference here. I'm going to bend this around all the way over here. And let's take a look at that. We'll go back to the edit page. can see it kind of fold there and it's starting a little bit too early so I want to start it about at this point here let's go ahead and open these keyframes here I need to slide this media over to zero what I want to do is go ahead open this bender 3d up and I want to change this angle just move it over slightly the amount let's max these up actually I want to line those up pretty close these are starting at zero which I think is a little bit too quick so I want to start them on about this location here so now when it gets to the end it's going to bend up Okay, I'll go ahead and close the keyframes now. And we'll go back to the edit page and we'll take a look at this. So it's going to start about where I want it. It's going to just kind of peel up to that point there. You can still see it's in place here. See there's the edge. And then it kind of goes off the screen. Okay, so this is still not very good, so what I want to do next is use the transform node. So I'll go back to Fusion, and we're going to assist this kind of this page curl. So I'm in Fusion now, and I have the transform 3D node selected. So let's go ahead and open up the keyframes again. I want to get on about the same location where I started, which is around 132. Okay, so what I want to do is go ahead and set my keyframes for rotation and translation. And I'm really just going to need a couple of them here. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and set them all. So now go back to the keyframes and then I want to hit this point here, which is about 225. And then go ahead and rotate these up a little bit. And so we're going to just rotate that X 
move it off the screen here. So that I'm going to set that about 1.8. And then let's go down a little bit here. Okay, so let's make this a little bit more 3D space. So I'm going to lift that up a little bit, slide the X over a little bit at this point. Just to give it that 3D lift there, and then it can come on out of the way there. So this isn't perfect. You guys can play around with the way you want it to look. But I'm just going to give it a little bit of depth there by changing some of those parameters. And, and by the way, I do have the transform here selected on the edit window. I went back there and these transform uh, markers aren't going to do anything. It's not going to show you the fusion transform points. So um, just ignore these that they're up right now. So if we go through this point here, we can see it's starting to lift and we get that a little bit of that 3D motion. And then it's gone. So I want to go back to the original point here. We get this lift. So I don't have any black showing in behind here. I'm going to use the left arrow, get to the point where it is a full frame. I've got my magnet on here. I'm going to go ahead and slide this uh, clip underneath here to that point. And then we'll go through. There we go. And so that's pretty simple. Hopefully you guys can uh, make some use of that Bender 3D. That's a nice little tool that's built into Fusion that's now available for Resolve. So take a look at that. And like I said, take a look for the, the page turn that will be posted on my, my site very shortly here. And that will be more like a book page turn. It's going to be a little bit more in depth. So we'll have that posted shortly for you. But for now, thanks for watching this video. If you like it, please subscribe and please like the video. Thanks for watching. Take care.